Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in our tutorial series about Spring Security with Angular. In this video we are going to be talking about our session registry. So as you may have known uh, in our previous videos, we have created an in-memory session registry. Basically just a hash map that contains all of our session IDs that we generate and we can also query them. But nothing special. Now what we want to do is we want to create a Redis um, session registry. Um, so for those of you who do not know uh, about Redis, I would recommend a tutorial um, video that I'm going to be uh, linking in the description about Redis, about the nice and cool things that you can do with it, and also about the configuration and how to create it and all of that nice stuff. So that's something that I won't be going into details in this video, but you can find it in that tutorial uh, where it, I explain how you can um, use Redis uh, to store some data inside of it and query it and all of that nice stuff. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to add the dependency to Redis, so to um, Spring Data Redis. Um, and once you have done that and reloaded your Gradle project, uh, so the dependency is downloaded, we can move on to the configuration. In the configuration uh, package, we have the app config and we want to create a new uh, Java class and name it Redis configuration. Redis configuration, we want to annotate it with at uh, configuration as usual. And um, now I am going to implement it and then I will describe you what I did so that you just know. So here is our Redis configuration. As you can see, we have the configuration to the server. Uh, it's on a local host and this port. Um, so I have the server running currently on my machine. Again, all of this, how to get this is in the other tutorial video that will be in the description. So you can check it out and then come back here. And I have my server currently running on localhost and this port. And I have created a second bean called Redis template that we're going to use to uh, create Redis value operations that we can use to store our sessions. Now let's move into our session package. We are done with the configuration, by the way. So let's move into our session uh, package and uh, let's rename this one from in-memory session registry to just session registry because we are going to be using both we're going to uh, use these sessions as a fallback when we don't have redis so what we are going to do now is um, we're going to uh, inject the redis template so we can go here in the constructor and we're going to say uh, final uh, redis or redis template so the bean that we created with string uh, string because we're just going to be storing strings and let's name it uh, Redis template and we are going to uh, auto wire it here and as you can see if we go Redis template dot um, uh, ops for value here we can get uh, the value operations and then we can actually create uh, here um, private final um, value operations uh, for string string and we can name it uh, we can name it actually our session or read this Redis session storage and we can initialize it here once we have initialized our Redis session storage we want to move on to our uh, register session method here we're going to um, do the same things as we did before. We are going to generate our session ID and we are going to um, go with try and catch block where we're going to catch uh, all kinds of exceptions. So exception E. Um, we can uh, log it here if we want to, but we don't have a logger. So we are just going to print it. Um, and what we are going to do here is we are going to inject this one here. And what this does is is uses this one as a fallback. So basically, if you would go uh, Redis session storage dot put, uh, sorry, dot set, and then the key would be the session ID, and the value is username. And uh, if you don't have a Redis server running, this would throw an exception. So this line here would throw an exception, we would catch it and we would uh, store the session in memory. And we're going to do the same thing uh, here. So we're going to just copy this part here. And we're going to go get. And we're getting the username here. So we're just returning it. 
Um, so as you can see, this returns a value, which is in our case a string. And again, we are catching any exceptions. And instead of uh, this line, we're just going to do this. Basically, it's the same thing. And this should work now. So if I uh, restart our application, we should be able to see that we are using the Redis uh, session storage instead of the, yeah, instead of the in-memory session storage. So once our application is started, I'll put breakpoints here so that we can see it. Um, we can go to uh, we can go to Postman and we can execute this request. We get here. We are setting the session with blah blah for user one. Um, let's remove this one. Go further on. And then here we are um, now we would have to go this way, copy this part here, go to our list endpoint and in the headers paste this. Once we run it, we should hit the second endpoint. You see the session ID and we try to get something from Redis and as you can see we get the value which is user one. And that's it. It's actually quite simple how to use Redis once you have it installed actually. Um, but yeah, now we have our Redis session storage. What this does is actually it helps you if you have multiple instances of your applications, you can, and um, for example, you have a load balancer and you try to log in and your front end goes to an instance that doesn't have in memory um, that session, um, it would uh, now fetch it from Redis and you would have it in Redis. So it's distributed among your um, nodes that you have of your application. So it's definitely a way to go instead of the in-memory one. In-memory one would be just for tutorials and showcases. But yeah, that would be everything for this uh, video. And if you have any questions, if you would like to see something different in this uh, tutorial series, um, to let me know and then maybe I can make a video on it. Until then, I will see you in the next one.